I am just so lucky to have you guys as viewers. People share really interesting stuff with me. So I woke up this morning with this email saying how we can send genetic material into the past. Time travel. Really? So if you're all keeping up with my Rendlesham Forest incident inquiry, you know I've been looking into Cobra Mist, which is the Orford Nest over the horizon radar. Maybe, maybe it did something else. But one of the stories that I shared with you was how biological material was planted round the bottom of the masts, the antennas, and a garden centre in Suffolk wanted them as shrubbery to sell because they were mainly American plants. There were corn and stuff, pine trees. But the day after Cobra Mist suddenly, overnight, was shut down, which is another great story. Why? They went to retrieve the American shrubs and sell them in the they'd all gone. So somebody really wanted those plants. And the story I have is that there was a biological research division inside the Cobra Mist or in a laboratory nearby who was doing some kind of genetic experiments with the radio antenna and the plants. How was the radio frequencies affecting living matter? This guy says it's biological time travel. Really? So this is what he told me. Back in the 19th century, people started experimenting with magnets and uh, growing plants between capacitor plates. So, you know, it's a kind of classic 19th century. I love it. It's steam engine science where you put a magnet next to a daffodil bulb, whatever. So they started sprouting maize, corn as I would call it, under magnets or under an RF frequency field in the 19th century. And what they found was staggeringly interesting. You know, today's modern corn has a big husk with a big corn on the cob and it's a tall, strong plant. And maybe, I don't know, I think it only has one or two cobs, but they're big and the kernels are wonderful and you use it for ethanol and feeding to your animals or eating corn on the cob. Whatever you do with it, it's a, an important crop. Well, when they germinated the modern day corn under a magnet or under an electric field, I'm not sure which, maybe both, the corn was strange when it grew up. It reverted to its ancient form 2,000 years earlier. It went back to a, a weedy grass. Now that weedy grass corn, you can actually see in the wild, it grows uneconomically in South America. It's got multiple corn cobs and it's of no economic interest. It's the ancient variety that for maybe a couple of thousand years, us humans and natural selection has made the corn better and better and better to produce stronger plants and have this big corn cob that farmers love and earn some money. The corn was sent back to its genetic past. Being meddling humans, they couldn't resist in trying the same experiment on a living creature. This time trout, rainbow trout in a tank. The eggs were incubated under this magnetic field at a frequency, I don't know, We'll have to go and find out exactly what they did. And exactly the same thing happened. The trout were prehistoric. They had a big bottom jaw. They were much bigger. They were aggressive. They had much more muscles. And they, they should have been the same as their siblings that were raised normally. There was no difference. They came from modern day parents. Mummy and daddy trout should have made mummy and daddy modern trout. No, they were Neanderthal, almost basic trout, as if they'd gone back to the Stone Age. Well, that's what people are saying. So I looked it up because I don't like to just believe an email and pass it on to you. So I looked it up and sure enough, it seems that that research has been done and that's what they always find. It seems that there is something more to our DNA. You know how we all have instincts, or a cat has an instinct, or our sheep have instincts. You know, they're frightened of dogs and cats catch mice and we do human things without us actually being told to do them. It seems that instincts are passed on 
somehow from generation to generation. How does that work? What this person told me and how he described us is very interesting. He said, if a builder goes to Home Depot, B&Q, and buys two by fours, I don't know what the English equivalent is, and um, bricks, that builder could build a house or he could build an airplane hangar with the same materials. It depends on the plans. And what he described us as doing is, if you look at your arm, it's like um, skin and bones and muscles and nerves. It's identical to your leg, which is skin and bones and muscles and whatever, nerves. How does your body know to grow an arm out of the B and Q Home Depot blocks or a leg? There is a plan. Now, some people would turn to religion and say, the plan is up there. Well, well, it might be, but somehow a plan of the building blocks of life is passed down to actually tell the builder what to build or tell us what to grow. And it seems that frequency alters that. It destroys the plan. And plants or animals, who knows if this has been tried on humans? I certainly hope not. But we revert to our basic form. We would become cavemen. That's what the guy said. Now, I think that's a bit much. But he goes on to show this really funny but fascinating map. Did you realize that male human body hair varies throughout the world? Where am I going with this? Well, he produced this map. Do you notice that Asia and Africa have very low body hair counts? This is quite convoluted, right? Why? Well, because according to the magnetic resonance sending us back to the cave age theory, his theory, not mine, is that Africans left Central Africa, went to caves in Atlas Mountains that have magnetic properties. That is true. They have strange forces inside caves. There's magnetite and minerals. So you're living in, if you were living in a cave, you're living in a magnetic environment. So over hundreds of years of these hairless Africans living in caves, the magnets made Africans revert to an earlier species. You see where I'm going with this? This is pretty out there. And they became hairy and took over Europe. Well, I think it's just hilarious. But if you do look at the body hair distribution map, it seems to go up the Iberian Peninsula and then spread across Europe. Today, there's some hair in America, but European settlers, I guess. But there's no hair in Africa and there's not much hair in Asia. Was it because our ancestors out of Africa got magnetically sent into the past by living in a cave in the Atlas Mountains and reverted to cavemen and apes? No, oh, I have no idea. I must admit, I like physics, I like chemistry, I like astrophysics, and I'm terrible at biology. So you biologists out there put me right. How does our arm know that it's an arm? How does our leg know it's a leg with the basic building blocks, which are very similar? And are plants sent back to the Stone Age by magnetic resonance? And then a better question, was that what they were experimenting with at Cobra Mist at the secret orphan nest site? The truth is definitely out there in this case. Thank you.